The Great Other, also known as the Lord of Darkness or the God of Night and Terror, is a deity in the Game of Thrones universe. Followers of R'hllor, the Lord of Light, believe there are two gods, the Lord of Light and the Great Other, who are in eternal conflict over the fate of the world. The Great Other representing darkness, cold and death, and R'hllor representing light, heat and life. Melisandre believes that no man could survive looking upon the Great Other's true form, and refers to the Others or White Walkers as the cold children of the Great Other. Melisandre also believes that dreams are the whispers of the Lord of Darkness that aim to drag humanity into an eternal night. When gazing into her night fires, she sees visions of a white wooden face with a thousand red eyes and a howling boy with a wolf's face. She thinks these two individuals are the champions of the Great Other, but we as the reader know that they are actually Bran and Bloodraven, two powerful green seers who serve the Old Gods. So it is possible that the Great Other and the Old Gods are different interpretations of the same entity or being. One of the only non-Targaryen dragons we are ever told about was Terax, the Mount of Jannara Belarius. Sometime before the Doom of Valyria, the pair attempted to fly the length of Sothorios, the southern continent of this world. They flew further south than any human has ever gone before, attempting to find boiling seas and steaming rivers of legend. However, after three long years of flying, they only found endless jungle, desert and mountains. When she finally returned to the Valyrian Freehold, she declared Sothorios to be a land without out end. In the Game of Thrones books, whites are way more powerful. In book one, two dead Night's Watchmen are found beyond the wall and are brought south by the Night's Watch. In the night, they both reanimate and are hell-bent on assassinating the Lord Commander Gior Mormont in his chambers, which might indicate they retain some of their memories from when they were alive. While attempting to kill the Lord Commander, a single white manages to slay five Night's Watchmen before being defeated. This demonstrates that in the books, the whites are more of an unkillable tank with each one being formidable alone. How did Oberyn Martell get his nickname the Red Viper? All his life, Oberyn has been a pretty loose unit, but in his youth, his recklessness was on another level. When he was 16, he was found in bed with the paramour of Lord Ironwood. Feeling dishonored, Ironwood challenged Oberyn to a duel. Given Oberyn's youth and high birth, the duel was to first blood. Both men took cuts, and Ironwood's honor and the matter was resolved. Oberyn soon recovered from the wound. However, Lord Ironwood's injury festered and killed him. After the incident, men whispered that Oberyn had fought with a poisoned blade, and ever since, friends and foes alike have called him the Red Viper. Did you know there were dragons in Westeros before the Targaryens? There was Urax, who lived in the time of the First Men. Urax was killed by Serwyn of the Mirror Shield, who snuck up on the dragon while hiding behind a polished mirror shield so that the dragon could only see its reflection. When close enough, Serwyn plunged a spear through Urax's eye, killing the beast. Sir Galadon of Moor was said to have slain a dragon with an enchanted sword called the Just Maid. The legendary hero Crackbones allegedly tied the neck of a dragon into a knot. Davos the Dragon Slayer was a legendary warrior from the Reach during the Age of Heroes. His moniker implied that he encountered and slew a dragon. The Grey King, a legendary ironborn monarch, was said to have killed a sea dragon named Naga and used her bones to construct a massive hall that still partially stands. And the Cannibal, an enormous coal black dragon that feasted on rival dragons, newborns and dragon eggs. The beast was said to have lurked on Dragonstone even before the Targaryens came. The Thens are an ancient free folk clan that live in the Frostfangs beyond the wall. They are led by the Magna of Then, who considers himself as the last of the first men. Unlike other wildling chieftains, the Magna is revered as a god and commands the absolute obedience of his men. The Thens are also better equipped than other clans, wielding bronze weaponry, armor, and helms. Due to their weaponry, obedience, and discipline, they are considered among the most elite fighting forces of the wild Wildlings. Jon Snow accompanies a raiding force of a hundred Thens sent to climb the wall and attack Castle Black from the south, while the king beyond the wall, Mance Raider, attacks from the north. However, they are betrayed and captured by the Night's Watch. After Jon is given command of the Watch, he arranges a marriage between Sigorn, the new Magna of Then, and Lady Alice Karstark, thus creating House Then, one of the newest noble houses in Westeros. Have you ever been so desperate for an heir that you married six different women? Well, for Maegor Targaryen, that was his reality. First, he married Cerise Hightower, but the marriage remained childless, so Maegor claimed she was barren and took two more wives, Alice Haraway and Tyanna of the Tower. Alice soon fell pregnant, but Queen Tyanna secretly poisoned Alice's child in the womb, leading to a stillbirth of an eyeless and twisted monstrosity. Tyanna then convinced Maegor that Alice had an affair, which caused Maegor to kill Alice and wipe out her entire family. At this point, Maegor was done messing around, and he took Jane Westerling, Eleanor Costello, 
Thostain and Rainer Targaryen, who were known as his Black Brides. Jane Westerling soon fell pregnant, but she too birthed a stillborn that lacked arms and legs. Tyanna later confessed to the poisoning. Eleanor also gave birth to an eyeless stillborn that had small wings. With all the stillbirths, Maegor grew suspicious and found out about Tyanna's poisoning, so he cut out her heart and in the end, Maegor died without an heir. Despite never even swinging a sword in the show, in the books, Mance Raider is a great warrior. The wildlings respect strength above all, and to become king beyond the wall, Mance had to prove himself worthy. While gathering strength, Mance had to contend with rivals who also sought to become king. Mance defeated three of these contenders in single combat, which proved to the wildlings that he had the strength to lead. Two other wildlings also desired to become king, Tormund Giantsbane and Steer, the Magna of Then. But Mance bested them both, and they ended up joining him. Mance also spars with Jon Snow, besting the bastard who is shocked by his speed and skill. The Field of Fire was one of the greatest Targaryen victories ever. During Aegon's conquest of Westeros, King Lauren Lannister of the Rock and Marin Gardiner of the Reach assembled a massive army, roughly 55,000 strong, to oppose Aegon. Their army outnumbered Aegon's 5 to 1, but Aegon and his sister wives had three dragons. While the armies clashed, their dragons set the dry field surrounding the Gardiner and Lannister army aflame, creating an inferno that began to consume the battlefield. Aegon's forces were safely upwind, but the Lannister Gardiner army was not so lucky. The dragons continually rained fire upon the trapped army, resulting in a crushing victory for Aegon. While the Targaryens had only lost a hundred men, their enemies had lost 5,000, including the entirety of House Gardiner, with another 10,000 suffering severe burns. The Lannisters surrendered and the legend of the Field of Fire would help Aegon win future victories without opposition. Did you know that House Royce from the Game of Thrones universe have several sets of ancient bronze plate armor that is inscribed with magical runes that allegedly protect the wearer and make them immune to injury? We saw this armor in House of the Dragon. Rhea Royce, Daemon's first wife, wore a set of this armor, though in the show it looks to be leather rather than bronze plate, and given Rhea's ultimate fate, it is clear that the runes didn't work as intended. Remember Melisandre's creepy shadow baby from Game of Thrones? This sorcery is known as shadow binding and is considered to be one of the most powerful types of magic in this universe. Shadow binders seem to be able to bend shadows to their will, crafting horrific abominations. The only confirmed use of shadow binding in the series is Melisandre and Stannis's shadow baby. Melisandre seems to use the power of Stannis's king's blood to give birth to a demonic shadow creature that is then used to assassinate Renly Baratheon. It is heavily implied that Stannis may have been the one controlling the shadow, using it as a vessel to commit the kin slain. Both Brienne and Catelyn describe the shadow as taking on Stannis' form, and during Renly's assassination, Stannis is unconscious and could not be awoken, implying he may have been controlling the shadow in a dreamlike state. Following the event, Stannis has terrible nightmares and begins to age rapidly, as if his very soul has begun to deteriorate after being exposed to the shadow magic. 